Well, here we are once again. It's time for some Wednesday Bible study. It's kind of hard to believe we're in the month of August. The summer is moving along. The year's moving along. It's incredible, but that's what it is. But here we are now, and we're going to do this. We're going to take a few minutes, go into the book of Romans, talk about faith. Uh, we hope everybody uh, enjoyed last week. We put Jimmy's uh, sermon from last Sunday on for Wednesday night so people could uh, see it who maybe didn't get a chance as he talks about the, the opportunities that we have to serve the Lord. But we won't say too much about that. We'll move, move on past that. Uh, you can always look at that. It's in, it's in our archives on uh, uh, YouTube under James Couts if you want to look at any of these uh, Bible studies or Sunday morning services. And speaking of James Couts, that's who I am. Pastor James Couts from Evangel Assembly of God, Evangel Church in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 1045 Northwest 1st Avenue. Our service, uh, my, our Sunday morning service is at 11 o'clock. If you don't have a church home, come by and see us. But uh, do check us out on Facebook Live on Sunday mornings. And then we have, that goes to YouTube as well. And then this is on Facebook as a video and then goes to YouTube. So uh, we're glad that you could be with us. Let's have a word of prayer and ask God to help us and to bless us and to meet the needs that we have. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time. We thank you for the opportunity to go into the Scripture, into the Holy Scripture, the eternal Word of God, the living and true way, Scripture given by inspiration of your Holy Spirit. We thank you for that. And we're so glad that we have it to lead us and to guide us and direct our paths in the ways of righteousness. Help us to grow and develop into the kinds of people you would have us to be. In these days of difficulty, may we be strong and ready to fight the good fight of faith and to reach out and to serve and to minister as you would raise us up. Uh, for people who have needs and problems and difficulties tonight, we pray that you would help them bring healing and restoration and help and hope and deliverance. We ask in Jesus' name, and everybody say a good amen. And speaking of help uh, for times of trouble, we mentioned last week uh, uh, in the book of Romans, uh, this whole business is the faith way, you know, trusting God for our needs. But we mentioned in, in chapter 8 that Paul had said in verse 26 that the, that, uh, the Spirit, that's the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, also helps our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we should many times. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings, which do not have to be uttered, which we can't utter because we don't know what to, how to pray. And the way this works is that he that searches the hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. So you see, there's the reason faith works, because we know that everything, uh, if we have faith, everything is in the hands of God, and everything is going to be taken care of like it should be. What a glorious experience to know that uh, we have a plan that has been laid out for us, all things are working together for our good because we are in the family of God. We live in faith and we walk in faith. We pray and we operate in faith. And he says, uh, listen to this, in verse 31, the, the second half, if God be for us, who can be against us? God didn't spare his own son, but he gave Jesus. And if he, and if he didn't spare his own son, uh, then he's going to, of course, be willing to share with us freely all things. God is on our side. If God be for us, who can be against us? What a great statement that is. Are you taking that to heart? Do you need help today? That's where it comes from. And then he, then he makes this great testimony of praise and victory. In verse 35, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? So tribulation, our distress, our persecution, our famine, our nakedness, our peril, our sword. Why, we could be killed all day long. We could be counted as sheep for the slaughter. But in all of these things, we are more than conquerors through Jesus, through him that loved us. Here's how solid we are. This is where the faith stability, see, the, 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 the idea that you don't have to hope and suppose and wonder, but you can know for sure. He said, I am persuaded 
that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. See, nothing can separate us from the love of God. See, there is a place of assurance. There is a place of stability. See, Paul calls it the righteousness which is of faith. See, righteousness which is of faith. He said, if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. See? If you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Because the scripture says, and he quotes the Old Testament, Whosoever believes on him shall not be ashamed. There's no difference between the Gentiles and the Jews. He's the same Lord, and he is rich unto all that call upon him, because whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And we've got a job, and we've got a mission. We've got an opportunity as the church and as the people of God. It says, how can people call on Jesus if they have not heard about him? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard. Another, let me back up. It says, how shall they call on one whom they don't believe in? And how can they believe if they haven't heard? And how will they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? And so we have to go. We've got to go. We've got to carry out the gospel. We've got to carry out the truth. God wants all of Israel to be saved. And God wants all of his people uh, to come to him. But no matter what your background is, you've got to, you've got to come by the way of Jesus. And uh, he, he's not just wanting Israel to be saved, but he wants Gentiles to be saved. He wants every man to be saved. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. See? Now, God has provided, through his knowledge, a plan that will work and has worked and can work for anybody and everybody of him, through him, and to him. All things belong. Who has known the mind of the Lord? See, Paul breaks into another great praise here. Let me pick up on this one in verse 33 of chapter 11. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. Who has known the mind of the Lord? Who has been his counselor? Who has first given to him, and it shall be uh, uh, re recompensed unto him again. Of him, through him, and to him are all things to whom be glory forever. So what we do, is as we accept the Lord, then in faith we want to live for the Lord. And the way you do that, he said, is to, by the mercies of God, see, by the power of God, the provision of God, that's what your faith is in, and the provision of God, not in yourself, not in your own strength, not in your own power, but in the provision of God, he says, um, uh, Present your bodies, by the mercies of God, a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. See? We're ready to work for the Lord. Let us wait on our ministry. Let us exhort. Let us give. Let us uh, lead. See, let's, let's be kind. Let's be honest. Let's be fervent. Let's rejoice in hope. Let's be patient in tribulation. Let's con continue instant in prayer. Distribute to the necessity of the saints. Let's be given to hospitality. Bless them who persecute you. Bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceit. See, we're out ready to serve the Lord. We're out ready to, to do the will of God and to carry out the plan of God by faith and by confidence in Jesus and who he is and what he has provided for us. 
and it's all about faith. He says, you know, you know sometimes we, we, we think we've got all the time in the world, and time really is a great commodity and is a very precious commodity, and we don't have all the time in the world. It says that we know the time, and it's high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of God. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. See? How are we going to be able to live for the Lord? How are we going to please the Lord? By faith, by having strength and confidence in the things of God. See, depending on the Lord, whether we live, we live unto the Lord. Whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ both died and rose and revived that he might be Lord both of the dead and the living. People are going to have to acknowledge it one way or the other, and we need to acknowledge it now. He said, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess, so that every one of us shall give account of himself to God. See? And we want to, we want to be able to give good account of the things that we do. We need to work for the Lord. We need to please the Lord. It says that Christ didn't please himself. He didn't live for himself. He said, Not as my will. But thine be done. See, see these things that have been written in the, in the in the scriptures is and Paul's talking about the things before the New Testament. And we have the New Testament now, more, which is more than ever. He said, "Whatsoever things were written, were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope." Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another, according to Christ Jesus, that you may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Receive ye one another, as Christ also received us to the glory of God. Praise the Lord, he said. Serve the Lord. See, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Let, let, me, let me read that again. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. See, Paul said to these Romans, says, I'm persuaded of you, brethren, and I think he would be of us if he knew us, that you are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, able to admonish one another. See, but he wants us to be aware of these things and use these things for the glory of God. See, that, that God might receive the glory. God might receive the, the, the credit. and God might give us the power to do more and more and more for him. See, Paul said, I'm working for the Lord. I've got some things planned, and I know you have some things planned. And we, we, we pray for one another. See, he says, I, I uh, beseech you, brethren, and uh, for Christ's sake and for the love of the Spirit, that you strive together with me in your prayers that I may be delivered, see, from people who don't believe, and that my service, which I have for Jerusalem, may be accepted of the saints, and that I may come by the will of God, and you may be refreshed. The purpose of the saints of God in the eyes of Christ is to minister his love and to minister his goodness and to minister his mercy and to reach out to people uh, for the power of the gospel. And uh, sometimes when we have problems and difficulties, and we do, and we live in troubled times and difficult times, sometimes what happens is, is that we uh, forget that other people have needs. And one of the main things we need to do is reach out in mercy, reach out with honor and dignity and meet people and touch people and lift people up in the name of the Lord. We've got to have faith that God is going to bless us. God is going to anoint us. God is going to give us power. God is going to give us authority so that we can reach out to other people who are in need because we are the ministers of this New Testament of grace, this New Testament of faith. See, the preaching of Jesus Christ. See, 
Paul said it is of power to establish people by the gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, which had been kept secret before, but now it's known to all men. Listen, God wants to reach out to you. God wants to raise you up and make you into the kind of person that you need to be. Let's, let's pray that God would do that for you, okay, whoever you are. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you in these closing moments that you've been with us and that you've given us your love and power and your grace and your revelation. And we pray that we would listen well to these words and we would take these words and reach out to people who have needs all around us and minister the gospel, the power and the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. May it happen in our lives as we preach the gospel and live for Jesus. In his precious name we pray. And once again, everybody say a good, great, big amen. God bless you. Yeah.